going on guys and welcome back. Today I'm going to be making a really cool naturalistic betta fish aquarium. I've got a really cool special betta fish with amazing colours and I want to do a really cool setup that mimics its natural environment. Well as best as I can because it's still a glass box at the end of the day. So the aquarium I'm going to be using guys is a 30 centimetre cube aquarium with an awesome twin star light. Obviously I'll put all the proper sort of figures and everything up on the screen but yeah obviously white glass, really good size, perfect for a betta fish and I've also put onto it a clear sort of background as well. Well, it's not clear, it's, it's misted, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Right, so what's the point of that little bit of gravel that we've got there, just randomly in the centre? Well, that is because if you put too much fine sand in, in the too thick of a layer, it will actually compact and cause all sorts of issues in your tank. This stuff, which is just basically crushed lava rock from JBL, it's really good at stopping those bad conditions, you know, generating underneath compacted sand. So if you put that down first, it just adds a nice little layer for beneficial bacteria as well. Now you saw me just moving it away from the edges there with that special flattening tool thing. I and mean, that's only because this stuff's quite ugly and this way we can bring the sand right to the edge and it will look nice and tidy. Oh, another quick point I want to make, guys, and I think it's important. You don't have to use, like, crushed lava rock if you can't get hold of it. You can use any kind of coarse gravel. This stuff works best because it's so porous, but I've used driveway gravel before, gravel from a riverbed, that sort of stuff. Anything that stops fine sand compacting down. And for the tank, I've got this really nice natural-look gravel that I recycled from another tank, and I think it will look really good with what else I've got planned for the skate. Click subscribe. So you can see here guys, I've just bumped up the background area with some other gravel or sand, it's coarse sand, fine gravel, just to you know create a little bit more depth because I don't have much of this stuff. Well, I didn't think I did. <laughs> and then I found this pot, which means that I've actually got loads. <laughs> so yeah, this looks really good together, all, all of these different things. So they're gonna be part of what I'm using to simulate the sort of Asian stream we're going for. So from the research that I've done looking into the Asian style streams, they're actually quite sort of open and the gravels and pebbles and all that look quite sort of randomly coloured, which is good because that's what I've got. Greenery or pieces of driftwood seem to be like at the edges of the streams uh, and then that sort of crystal clear water in the centre. So I think that's what I'm going to go for here. Keep that open foreground just to show off the fish and put in the botanicals in that area, a few pebbles and then build up the plants that why am I talking about it? Do it. <laughs> That is looking really good. Now, with the research that I've done, as I said, the foreground stays pretty clear. This is quite common in nature. It's why a lot of the scapes kind of look samey, open foreground with the sand, and then it sort of builds up in layers with different textures at the back. That's because we're simulating a river at the end of the day, which is clear in the middle and then built up at the edges. If you don't do that, it doesn't tend to look as good or natural or pleasing or even maintainable long-term. So what I want to do now is start filling in that back area of more substrate and building up to layers and levels so that I can stack on top of these pebbles even more. Because at the moment, we've got quite a flat scape. It's interesting to look at, I think, anyway. But, you know, we want height. And to create height, you must go higher, <laughs> obviously. But you've got to fill in voids. So you don't just want to stack stones on top of each other, otherwise you get stagnant areas behind it. So we can fill all those areas. that We've got the back top view here that like you can see. So here, all fill this all in. Fill this all in as well, because you don't want anything getting just stuck there and staying still. Yeah. 
Yeah, I like that. I like that. It's, it's really cute looking. And on top of those two areas now, we can have two separate sort of plants. Java ferns is what I'm going to go for. They are from Southeast Asia and that will suit the tank. But it's one thing I'm forgetting. Obviously, as you progress further into the river or stream, this area in the foreground is actually more sort of less coarse and more fine sand. So I'm just going to sprinkle some in that area just to get that grading looking a little bit neater. Yeah, I like that. I like that. It's got a real nice sort of natural grading to it. And what I will do in a bit as well is put some more of the smaller pebbles in the foreground, just a little cluster about there with some more detail around it. And it just sort of, you know, brings out the foreground a little bit as well. And in case you guys are wondering, all of these pebbles or cobbles or stones were collected locally to me, so all free. If you're worried about any nasties getting into your new aquarium, you can spray them down with a hydrogen peroxide solution. You can Google how to do that, it's very simple, and that'll actually sort of kill anything off on them for you. Okay guys, it doesn't get any more simple than that, does it? But if I just leave those two pieces of Java fern in there as I did there, just placed in, they'll just float back up. So what we can do is fix stones to each one with some super glue. It's the cyanoacrylate, cyanian acrylate, I'll put it up on the screen, glue, <laughs> that is completely fish safe and it dries in a, or as soon as it touches water, it like goes hard. So it's all, it's all good. Yeah, I'm really, really pleased with how that's turned out, guys. Now, I'm not pretending here to reinvent the wheel or, you know, make anything absolutely new that you've not seen before, but I wanted to create something nice and simple that shows off my fish. And to be honest, I think does replicate something you'd see in a little shallow stream somewhere. It's cute, isn't it? And it's tidy, it's easy. Just a few plants there. We've got the Blixer Japonica, the Java Fern, and then just Java Moss wrapped on some stones. I mean, all of you guys can do this, surely, you know, even if you haven't got the exact stuff as me. Now, the good thing is all these plants grow really well under low lighting, so you don't have to have the twin star. And in fact, I'm gonna turn that down to about 40% to make sure we don't get any sort of algae blooms. But now it's time to fill the thing up with water. And to do that, I'm gonna use mostly water from this aquarium so this is my <laughs> hello it's my discus aquarium whoa whoa where's the auto going where's the auto going no they don't attack the auto so it's all good yeah this is my discus aquarium these fish are absolutely fantastic love them love them love them and their water is fully matured some people suggest that mature water doesn't make any difference i've always found that it does so i'm going to use most of it from there and then top it up with some fresh clean chlorinated water oh look how good it looks just sat there like that <laughs> sorry <laughs>
Filtration and lighting sorted, but if it's really a stream, it's gonna have leaf litter in it, isn't it? That's fallen from the trees above. Like what I've done in the neon texture tank you can see here. So I was trying to simulate the sort of flooded areas of the Amazon rainforest. Now what you can see down the bottom is all of the leaf litter. Ooh, it's a little shrimpy. <laughs> Hello mate, he's just cleaning up that sand for me. Yeah, I don't want to take any out of there, so I need to go home, find some more. I can't actually remember where I put it, but yeah, I'll find it. You've got to boil it up first so that it sinks, because otherwise it'll just float on the top of the surface. It will eventually sink, but I want it to sink straight away and look really cool at the bottom there. So it's the next day and the water has cleared beautifully, but let's add that new leaf litter into that bottom section there and get it looking a little bit more natural. So yeah, we haven't gone overboard there. I, you know, I, I've used barely any of the botanicals that I prepared because it would just look silly if you just go nuts with it. I think that looks like a natural sort of amount that would fall into a stream and just sort of settle in its own place. I kind of let them fall in where they wanted to, but then <laughs> coasted them into sort of, you know, areas. But I think that looks good. Now, better fish are from slow moving streams or ponds and you know, you get floating plants in those sort of areas. So that's what we need to do is put some floating plants in the top or on the top. <laughs> Oh yes, yes, both those elements have proper sort of reeled it up for me. I think that looks great. And also, it, better fish don't like really bright light, so the floating plants are gonna block some of the light, even though I can reduce it, and it already is down to 50% anyway. You know, you don't need this sort of powerful light for these kind of plants at all. Any light will work, to be honest. So I've reduced the lighting levels down, and I've put in the floating plants, which will spread over the surface. So that's gonna make it really comfortable for our better fish, Mike. His name's Mike, by the way. You'll see him in a minute. Last thing we need to do, though, is put in a heater to make sure its temperature sits around the correct amount, which is 23, 24, 25, that sort of region. The room's pretty warm in here, to be honest. It's sitting at 22, so I don't actually need one, but I'll put it in because it's good for people watching the video who, who don't know this to see that they really do need a heater. They will be okay at 20 degrees, like room temperature, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're gonna thrive. So rather than them having them survive, let's have them thrive and put a temperature to around 25. Okay, so we're all set guys. It's time to finally put my better fish Mike into his new tank. That's <laughs> a straight away look, the leaf litter doing its job and giving Mike a little place to hide whilst he settles in. That's ideal. Now I'm just gonna turn the light off just so he's got some time to, you know, adapt and get comfortable with his surroundings. Okay, so Mike seems to be settling in really nicely already. Look, he's, he's not flapping around. He's not even breathing heavy, so he's not panicked at all. Look at how good he looks just sat there underneath that little area. Exactly what I wanted to do was to sit in that sort of middle section. <laughs> love it right so one thing that i haven't told you guys yet is this tank needs a lid you might be thinking my better fish doesn't jump i also thought that he jumped i have got a lid for this i've already made so yeah you can see they're just a simple piece of perspex or plexiglass you guys stay in, say in the states and it's just got a nice little Air at the front here so I could take it off for feeding, nice and simple, goes back on. And the sort of suction of any water on the rim kind of keeps it all locked down. It's never come off, so we're all good. And obviously I just cut some little slits where needed for the lights to fit in and for that back section there, look, so you can see everything goes down, but there's not any sort of gap. Well, I suppose 
you could jump up there but it's very unlikely isn't it but just make sure you do put a lid on your better fish guys it does happen they do jump <laughs> 